Welcome to the Lazy Man's Guide to Getting a 520 Plus on the MCAT. Stay a while. Now, I don't know why you're lazy. Maybe you want to watch anime, K-dramas, play League, Warzone. I don't know why you're lazy. But this entire idea started because my friend Justin asked me, if I were to take the MCAT right now, what would I get? And I was like, you'll you probably do pretty bad, but we can get your score up pretty fast even considering the fact that you're a pretty lazy guy. It just comes down to following a few simple steps. Now this video is meant to help guys like him out, who don't necessarily know that much about the MCAT, but want to just follow those simple steps to raising their score and fast. Now the lazy man's guide is not a do nothing and get a 520 plus guide. It's more of a how do I do the bare minimum and still get a 520 plus guide. Now, you'll have to have the motivation to get your shit together for maybe a month and a half, two months minimum, but hey, what can you do? Like, you want a 520 plus, you can't be that lazy, right? Now, if you find this to be too much, you can dial everything down. This can be the lazy man's guide to a 510 plus or 505 plus. Whatever goals you have, this guide can suit you. It's more of a strategy, not necessarily a study plan. Now first, it's content review. I'd say 14 to 20 days, go ham on that Kaplan book, and you don't, you can take some notes, but the main idea is just to try to understand everything 60%. Now if you see details that you think are too minor and would take too much headspace for you to memorize, like what is the function of DNA polymerase 3, for example, just something that you feel like is way too extraneous for you to have to know everything, you don't have to memorize that stuff because this is just a foundation for you. Being 60 to 70% comfortable with all the material should be a good base. Now during this time, mnemonics will save your life. A few of them include flat peg, snowdrop, 7-up, bl blast builds, clast cleaves, rise your rim, ride that ovum. You might not know what these mean, but I have included a comprehensive mnemonic list in the description below, so check that out. And now they're designed to help you memorize key pieces of information that you will need and quickly. Now, for these 14 to 20 days, you might have to take content review pretty seriously. You probably cannot be that lazy because if you spend the time now, you can be lazy later. So that's, that's the good part. As they say, the MCAT is about breadth, not depth. And now we have to go over a pretty important topic for when you're doing your content review and when you're trying to go over questions later, and that is the concept of yield. Now, a lot of people will tell you that everything is high yield on the MCAT, and that's true to some extent because everything could be covered on the MCAT. However, certain topics are covered a lot more extensively than other topics, and I've actually taken the time to categorize every single AMC question by subject. That way you can have an easier and lazier time doing your content review. And now this list should be a priorities list, what you should focus on more and what you should focus on less for when you're doing your content review. Now I know a lot of people don't have too much time to raise their score, so if you prioritize the things on the top, you should be able to raise your score more than if you're prioritizing everything. A majority of the people who aren't scoring above a 500 on the MCAT, it's likely because you have big content gaps in these areas. And filling these content gaps can likely get you to around the 510 range. Now first, the quas oh, croissant. First, quite possibly the highest yield topic on the MCAT is the concept of enzymes. So when you go over enzymes, you should know everything about them. That includes the types, michaelis menten kinetics, steady state, transition state, inhibition, cooperativity, just everything about enzymes. And if you know this stuff in detail, you can expect around 10 questions per MCAT relating to these topics. It's incredibly important that you know these high yield topics that I've included in my link in the description in great detail. A lot of people ask
constraints rather than trying to raise every section at the same time. Now I think the easiest section to bolster your score to get that 132 in would probably be the Psycho section because it literally depends on you memorizing that 86 page doc as well as you can doing a little bit of Anki like the Miles Down deck and then just not thinking that the AMC is constantly trying to trick you when you do the Psycho section. Now let's talk about practice tests. I would say do a few practice tests so that you understand the flow of things. The AMC material is the best material out there. Actually, you have to do all the AMC material. It doesn't matter if you wanna be lazy or not. That's the only way that you can actually do well on the MCAT. You don't have to really do anything else. It literally only comes down to doing the AMC material. Now, instead of categorizing every question you get wrong, making like a fancy spreadsheet, making, taking fancy notes after, for every topic that you get wrong, you know, using your highlighter. You don't have to do that type of stuff. I'd say the most important thing is categorizing the types of questions you get wrong into three main categories. One, content. You have content gaps. There's no way to get around this except for filling those content gaps. The second categorization would be that you are focusing on the wrong piece of information in the passage. And this is probably the best way you could be getting questions wrong because it's the easiest to fix. Just read the passage slower and try to answer questions slower and then you'll get more questions right. And eventually you can start building up that speed again. Now the third categorization would be overthinking. Now this comes up a lot when you're choosing between two answers that could both be right. One of them you use a lot more logic to try to come up with that answer and the other one just feels a lot more in your gut that it's right and you see that answer quickly. If you are getting questions wrong because you overthink, you have to train yourself to be able to override that feeling to go with the logical answer and to just follow your gut. Even though this may feel really difficult to do, in the end it may help you get a lot more points. Now let's talk about test taking logic. Now, it may feel like a lot, but really only around 20% of 20 to 25% of AMC questions actually require some analysis. Most of them are just pretty plug and chug. So now if you go from third party AMC material to the actual AMC material, you'll realize that the third party material tries to trick you a lot more than the AMC material does. The, the AMC material really just has a bunch of answers that look similar and you trick yourself into picking a different one. One thing you'll notice is that third party material also requires many more steps of logic while AMC likes to restrict it to between two or three max. For example, if you're doing a physics problem, you might only need to just plug it into an equation and that would be one step of logic. Now, there's always that one key piece of information in your passage that you will need in order to be able to solve the problem using only two to three max steps of logic. If you find yourself going four or five steps to be able to solve the problem, it's really likely that you are doing it wrong and you're overthinking. Going into the MCAT thinking that the AMC is constantly trying to trick you is a losing battle because then you're really just fighting with yourself. And this comes up a lot on the PS section. For example, there are a lot of general definitions that fit well with certain answers, but because you get too focused in on small details that you see in the text, you end up picking a different answer and that's the wrong answer. So sometimes it's important to just focus on the general details, not to try to trick yourself into thinking too much by looking into all the tiny details. For example, the AMC likes it so that anything relating to yourself is a piece of episodic memory. So almost every single question that you can see on an AMC material where memory relates back to a person has to do with episodic memory. Now a second thing to keep in mind is that AMC loves to use synonyms to make you think that you don't know something that you do. For example, a sulfhydryl group is a thiol group, an amber codon is a stop codon, but just because they gave you the common name doesn't mean that you don't know the answer. It's important to look at the stems of words like hydral could refer to that hydrogen group on the thiol group, ace could refer to a certain type of enzyme, 
or even just look at the extraneous information that they give you. Like for Amber Codon, they tell you that it's UAA, you, and you know that that's the same as a stop codon. So just because you've never heard of something or you've never seen a concept doesn't mean that it's the wrong answer. Don't be so quick to just eliminate those choices. And lastly, keep in mind that there are cases where using your outside information from what's in the passage may actually cause you to get the question wrong because a lot of times they're testing you about what is in the passage and not just general common sense. So if you've done all these things and your score isn't going up, you need to ask yourself two questions. One is, do I have content gaps? And two, is it an issue of lack of carefulness or lack of following my gut or my head? Now, you really can't escape the issue of content gaps because if you have content gaps, you need to fill them. But as I said earlier in the video, these, the next two problems are a lot easier to fix because you can either just slow down your timing and build it back up or train yourself to follow your gut or your head more depending on whichever one isn't working out for you. Now in the end, this might not seem all that lazy, right? Like you actually have to study some of this stuff a lot and do all the AMC material. That's not what I came for. But this video is really just here to help you figure out what you can prioritize to do less work to get the same score. For example, it would be worth a lot more of your time to, to memorize all the terms on the PsychSoc doc than to memorize the mechanism of the Gabriel amino acid synthesis thing or the Strecker synthesis. These things aren't necessarily the most important details that you have to focus on. It doesn't take really in-depth tracking of your progress, really in-depth notes, or any of that stuff to help you raise your MCAT score. It really just comes down to understanding what the test is about and how you are failing to meet certain criteria of the test. And I can't overstate this enough, it really comes down to not thinking so often that the te test is just here to try to trick you. I hope this video helped you to see a little bit more of what you should be prioritizing when you study for the MCAT so that you can spend more time watching anime and being lazy and less time stuck in the books when you don't need to be. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one, peace.